Hey, what's going on guys? This is Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics, where we are helping to amplify your comic book collection through integrity and community. We do a lot of comic and pop culture related content on this channel, so if you're new here, consider subscribing. In this video, we're talking about some back issues, not just any back issues, but we're talking about Mighty Morphin Power Ranger back issues. There's so many to talk about. So, like our other titles we've discussed, this is going to be part one in a series of multiple back issues for Power Rangers. And the first book we're going to talk about is Power Rangers number one, Hamilton. Yeah, so this is interesting, Brian. Obviously, when the Power Rangers first hit American soil, it didn't seem like a lot of uh, comic publishers out there had a lot of faith in the property, as this book was produced by Hamilton Comics. Now, it is the first modern appearance of the Power Rangers, but there's some controversy surrounding this. There was another book, Power Rangers Saga, that came out the same month. Um, some people could argue that that's the first appearances as well. There was also a comic that came in a pack of underwear that was released late in 1993 that obviously predates this book. But you're talking about the first appearance of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers um, that we see on the TV screen that we're, we're familiar with through movies and through their comic book series. And this is really the first appearance to grab. And really, it, it's an undervalued key. It's not... Um, an expensive book. It's just a hard to find book in good condition due to the fact that it was really a children's book when it came out. And at this point, you got 20 plus years of age on it. Then coming in at number four, we get Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number zero. Now, this is what kicked off the move of Power Rangers to Boom Studios. And there has been no change to the Power Ranger comic lore that has done more for the brand been moving to boom they really got a shot in the arm and it started with this power rangers boom number zero issue heavily marketed this is where we first got a look at these amazing goni montez helmet covers that have become the most some of the most collectible variants on the market and really kicked off some a trend of some like expensive high ratio rare late printing variants that have become synonymous with the Power Ranger brand through Boom Studios. Yeah, I remember that frenzy that took place when those foil covers first came out. Not the new ones that we're seeing now, but the set that came out a while back. People were going head over heels, searching for those, hunting those out, and they're demanding a good price. Yeah, and they still have retained quite some value. They may not be like most things at the kind of height of their release pricing, but they've maintained some solid value over the years. And really, they're just hard to find at this point. Then at our third spot, we got Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 41. Now, this book just released, and it's really still a cover price book, Brian. It got hot for a brief moment after release and has now kind of cooled down. But you're talking about the first appearance of a new Power Ranger team, the Omega Rangers. And this can be kind of confusing because there's a new Power Ranger team every couple years. So there's several incarnations of the Power Rangers. But this Omega Rangers team has been crucial to the current necessary evil storyline it's made up of kind of an amalgamation of different rangers from different teams and it features the red ranger jason that we all know from the original mighty Morphin power rangers front and center so this is a sleeper book a book to keep an eye out a book to go ahead and grab and stash if you're at all a fan of power rangers and you just maybe haven't been keeping up or if you see some um long-term kind of uh purchase in your in your future when it comes to power rangers this is one of my favorites coming in at number two we get go go power rangers number eight now this brian is a, a series that often gets forgotten about it's kind of the secondary series we'll say for power rangers um it's thought of as a kid series but it's not it re that's really due to kind of the art style that kind of encompasses this book so mighty morphin power rangers it, it really talks mostly about the stories of the kids in their battles, right? In their suits, in their costumes, what they do. Go Go Power Rangers is more indicative of what goes on in their regular teen lives. Because you got to remember, these kids are teenagers, they're going to school. Um, and Go Go Power Rangers kind of covers those parts of the stories. So when you're reading a, a crossover event or an event like Necessary Evil, it's kind of important to bounce back and forth between the two. And I think Go Go Power Rangers number eight caught people massively by surprise because everybody was out here anticipating this rumored new character that was going to be coming into the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger universe. And out of nowhere, 
we got a second one with the Ranger Slayer first appearing in this issue number eight. This book became a $25 book overnight. Copies have dried up. Um, it's kind of a first appearance. It doesn't get an, probably enough attention, but be on the lookout. Issue 48 uh, in the middle of this uh, necessary or at, towards the end of this necessary evil storyline. The solicitation for February, we already see her bow and, uh, and staff on the cover of a variant. So I think she's coming back. And then and at number one, we get Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number nine. Yeah, and this is the book that I was referencing before. This is the first appearance of Lord Draken. Not only, Brian, is this maybe my favorite underrated first appearance of a Power Ranger, this might be my favorite underrated first appearance in comics. And I know I'm going to catch heat for that statement. But you mentioned Campy, right? And you mentioned kind of the silliness of the show. Hope I'm not still in your thunder on that, but this is kind of one of those turning points that was a cool part in the show. But I'll let you explain why. Because there's no doubt that's on record. It's been documented through multiple videos about how much, how well you like this comic. So I'm not going to take it out from under you now. <laughs> yeah, it just you know I don't disagree with you. I grew up. I wasn't quite middle of high school, but I was older. This was my little brother's TV show, right? And it was one of those things that I would watch and be like, I just I don't fully get it. Like there's parts of it I think are cool, and there's parts that I just can't get down with. Um, and my biggest complaint about this show, even trying to watch it as like an adult, is the villains. The villains are not believable. They get their butts kicked easy. They're goofy. Um, they needed some grit. And a few years ago, um, there was a uh, fan YouTube video that got made that starred James Vanderbeek and a couple other like name characters that was like dark and R-rated. Um, uh, Adi Shankar did it, and it was incredible and if you're not familiar with his work he did like the thomas jane punisher youtube video and it gave you a glimpse of what power rangers could be and then enter lord draken with issue number nine and here we get a a thanos of the power ranger universe um we get our big bad who is legitimately uh scary who's legitimately ruthless who's going to test these kids in ways they haven't been tested and the market responded that book became a ghost. It became a $25 book. Now, it's really interesting on the market right now because, Brian, there's still people that don't even know about that book. So I'll see lots that'll say like Power Rangers, you know, 10 Power Rangers books, and there'll be four copies of that book sitting in there. At the same point, I'll see that book sell for $25 to $30 individually. So the awareness for that book isn't really out there. Um, but I think long term, if there's ever going to be a successful Power Ranger movie that resonates with the public on a large scale, Lord Draken has to be the villain. His action figures have instantly sold out at stores. His Comic-Con exclusives have gone for five times their, their asking price. He has clearly been the character that um, has captivated Power Ranger fans. And for all my OG Power Ranger fans – who maybe aren't familiar with what's been going on with the, the current series. You remember when we were kids, when Tommy Oliver kind of turned heel and then came back and became a Power Ranger, that was the most kind of seminal moment in the early show. This is another Tommy Oliver bad guy story. Um, and I think that that, that character and the way that you never know which way he's going to go is kind of the best thing the Power Rangers have have going for them. So that that is the book I would say be on the lookout for. It is the book I look for every time I look through a Power Rangers section is do they have number nine? And I will buy that book $10 and under all day, no conscious, no worries. Yeah, I was down visiting my, my father down in Tampa area. There's a comic book store near him. I went kind of digging for a bit on my own. And yeah, I found like five copies for cover. So I picked them up then and... Um, I also have a couple of Lord Draken Funko Pops. So there it is, guys. Those are five Power Ranger back issues for you to be on the lookout for. While you're out there hunting those bins, keep an eye out. See if you can pick those up cheap. And as always, stay tuned. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, do so now. Hit that notification bell so that way you'll always be notified when videos like this hit the channel.